Mr. Peters, I mean, today should be a significant moment, shouldn't it, with NATO announcing a vast increase in troops, especially along the eastern flank. But do you have hopes that we are going to see enough unity in NATO to actually put Putin on the back foot? I think there's plenty of unity in NATO. There's no question that um, the mission, the drive, and the intent is all there. But the real problem, I think, is the money, the funding, and the capacity to supply the Ukrainians and other allies in the region with the necessary kit and equipment required to repel these invaders. Um, you know, Mr. Wallace today demanding billions of more in investment is absolutely right. Firstly, because we have to just replenish the stocks that we're losing in giving weapons and equipment to the Ukrainians. I mean, before we can even rebuild, looking back, you know, five to 10 years and that kind of size of our military, we need to look back just four months ago. I mean, we have sent so much kit and equipment over to that flank with Russia, and so many other countries have done the same. And there won't, there won't be much left to do in the, in the future. One imagines that Putin is gambling on division and a lack of um, integrity when it comes to judgment between all of these countries. And we've already seen divisions between countries like France, who seem to be going down more of a route of territorial appeasement to Putin. And now you have Turkey agitating over the joining of Sweden and Finland, which was supposed to send a clear message to Putin. Is the message being sent to Putin not one of, yes, NATO is big, NATO is bold, but actually when it comes to the, the crunch, they're not taking the big decisions that they need to take? I think a lot of the thinking coming from some of those sort of disparaging nations will be inspired by the fact that they realize that Russia has significantly more will and also kit to endure a longer conflict than perhaps much of NATO's forces and indeed Ukrainians' forces can. Um, we've heard about you know death by a thousand cuts. Russia can survive a victory through a thousand cuts. And every time it loses a tank, two more appear. It's sort of like a, a military hydra. It can just keep going. Whereas we have neglected defense on the basic level for so very long. We've got great tech, very exciting drones, new ways of conducting warfare in the gray zone and all the rest of it. But when it comes to manpower, missiles and tanks, we're kind of lacking.